podcast of 98FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. In the last year, have you had an unpleasant experience in a Dublin taxi? Do you believe that Dublin taxi drivers are up to scratch? Or is there a lot of room for improvement? Should the number of random spot checks on drivers be increased to make sure that they're up to scratch and that their car is looking the part? Well, over 600 complaints were made against taxi drivers in the first six months of this year, according to a report out today from the National Transport Authority. Um, Here are just some of the complaints that were lodged, and this doesn't take into account all the complaints the passengers had where they didn't file a report. The sharpest rise concerned fare matters, where the number of complaints uh, increased by 45 percent. An additional 19 complaints were made in respect of vehicle condition. Another passenger in February complained to the National Transport Authority that this was the dirtiest taxi I've ever had the displeasure of sitting in. It looked like it had never been cleaned. So the big issues seem to be the state of cars, issues regarding fares. And we want to know, have you had an issue with a taxi fare or a taxi or a driver uh, so far in 2018? Call me right now on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp the programme on 0877 989898. 0877989898. Ninety-eight, ninety-eight, ninety-eight. Have you had any complaints against taxis in the last few months? And if so, what were they? Or maybe you think that um, taxis in Ireland are better than anywhere in the world. Maybe you think the lads are absolutely brilliant. The lads and ladies are amazing. Whatever your opinion, I would love to hear from you on six seven nine seven ninety-eight one. Now, just as a kind of a by the way, Mohammed, you're on ninety-eight FM. Hi, Mohammed. I'm very well. How are you? You have a bit of a problem regarding taxis, which is what? Okay, I have applied for my taxi license back in November 2017. And after, oh, nine months now, and I haven't got my license yet. A friend of mine, our ex-colleague working together, he applied at that time. He got his license in six weeks. He got his license in six weeks and you're still waiting? I'm still waiting. Every time I call them, they say, oh, yeah, a couple of months more, a couple of months more. They don't give me any answer whatsoever. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, any idea why? I called twice to National Transport Authority and to ask them that is there anybody above Gadi who can tell me or who can ask them that what is the issue behind it? Why is it taking so long? And they told me that they are the only one who can issue you the license and you can only ask them. And if you call them, one thing they don't pick up. If they do pick up, they are talking so bad, so rude to you. Like, I'm I'm just like, I don't know, I don't want to use any bad words. So they, they, they are very rude to you, to be honest with you. And in terms of your, your license, have you done all the tests and whatever? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done the test. I've passed the test very first time. Okay, very first time. Um, very first time. Uh, now, there, there's also background checks done on, on taxi okay. drivers, or at least they're there supposed a, to be. Yeah, there was, a, there was a news the other day about um, some of the drivers which are supposed to be guardy believe that they are of, uh, on, on, the, on the wrong visas or they got their visas through illegal ways or stuff like that. Because some of the lads, they got married to uh, European women. Do you remember the news the other day? Probably yes, I do. Ago? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I am thinking right now, because I didn't know that before, because my wife is European as well, and I'm on STEM4 visa as well, but I'm living legitimately here. My wife is working. I have a baby now. Nine months ago, the crazy thing is, nine months ago, my baby, my wife was uh, two months pregnant. Now my baby is two and a half months old. She was working full time. I am working full time. I'm paying my taxes. I'm doing everything what I can. I'm not taking any social or anything. And uh, sorry, just as regards the background checks, I'm assuming that's what's delaying it, is it? But, but how come my background checks are taking so long and the, and the same guy who was from the same country, he's... Oh, well, as a matter of interest, not that it really makes that much difference. What country are you from? 
Pakistan. You're from Pakistan, okay. Yeah. Um, so your mate, who's also from Pakistan, got his licence within six weeks. Uh, yeah. You, on the other hand, um, have been waiting since last November. Last November. Um, and just out of curiosity, I assume you don't have anything in your past that might come back to Nothing haunt you. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing. My father was a deputy superintendent. He's a lawyer right now in my country. My family is a very well-educated family. So what do you think? My father served police department for 25 years and you think I have any criminal record back there? No way. Okay, stay there for one second, Mohammed. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Uh, there has been an increase in the amount of complaints received by the National Transport Authority against our taxi drivers. Um, for example, on fares, there's been a 45% increase in the number of complaints about fares. That's huge. There's also been uh, complaints about the condition of vehicles. Um, Another passenger said it was the dirtiest taxi they'd ever had the displeasure of sitting in. And we want to hear from you about uh, our taxi uh, industry here in Dublin. Is it fit for purpose? Is it doing the job right? Are uh, overall... Generally speaking, from your experience, uh, do we have a good taxi service or have you areas that you have had a problem with? Text or WhatsApp 87 or you can call us on 67979891. Darren, you're on Dublin's 98FM. How are you, Darren? Fine, thank you. Now, Darren, um, tell me about your son's experience only last night. Uh, uh, last the weekend was uh, in Samson's care for him. We're in town, and um, the order taxi. I don't know whether it was through Hayd or one of them, but his friend has an account. Okay, he yeah, he has a taxi and, account with one of the car. companies. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so he got the taxi home, and my son was saying to the taxi driver, like, you know, don't take this off so and so's account. Like, you know, we're going to pay pay for this. You know, I said, oh, no, no, that's grand, that's grand. So when they got home, they they paid for the for the taxi fare and that. And then when they checked the next day, he, he had actually went in and took the same amount off the card as well, you know, so basically charged them twice, you know. Now, could that have been accidental? But we don't know. That's why I, I told him to check into it, like, you know, so we don't know if it was accidental or if it was deliberate. But, I mean, they had already told him not to make sure that he didn't take any money from the card, you know. Mm. Okay, so had they, so they handed over a card... And then, no, the card, set, the card is set up to the account Oh, already. sorry, yes, the card, of course, is, is on the account. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, was friends. So the order the taxi through his friends, through his friends' account. Yes, okay, yeah. which had a card uh, registered on it. Yeah. Okay, so but it, then when they got when to their location, they paid in cash. Yeah, they told him they were paying cash and not to take any money off, off his friend's card, but, you know, they were paying the cash. And he said, oh, no, no, that's grand, he said, but when they checked in the next day, the, the money had been taken from his friend's uh, card as well, you know. All right. Now, I, I, I would like to think that that was accidental, but it I'd be... Have been, it could have been. Now, I, haven't, I haven't been speaking to my son about it since, so I don't know if, if his friend got onto them and, and got the money reforged to him or not, you know? Okay, I'd be very okay. interested. Um, yeah, I'd be very interested to know whether that was a genuine accident or it was your man pulling a fast one. Mm, that's what I'd be interested to know. You know, like I told him to ring, told him to ring up and, and like you know, complain to the taxi authorities. Like. But I assume they have uh, the taxi driver's number if they booked it through an app, do they? Oh, well, I, I would assume they have. Yeah, yeah I, would, I, I, I would assume so because you get told what taxi is um, Yeah, what, what is coming from. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It, it should be in the app somewhere uh, who he was, in which yeah. case in which case, it won't be that easy for him to uh, stroke them. Well, that, that's true as well. But just, just, just the experience like that was taken from, from the chopstick card app and telling them not to, you know? Yeah, okay. But that, that could be an automatic thing if you book it through the app. Um, and the driver probably should have said, well, look, that'll be taken off your card anyway. Yeah, yeah. You really, if, that, if that is the case, you know, I can understand that. Like, if it's automatically comes out. But after that, my problem was that after them telling them, like, make sure no money goes off the card, like, he could have said, well, it'll automatically come off. And then he could have said, okay. You know, he could have rang his friend and said, look, this has gone on, you can your card, so pay, which I, we pay, let the get go through your card, then we'll give you the cash, you know? Mm. Uh, okay, okay, so uh, I'd be very interested to know whether or not that was a genuine mistake uh, or not, and let us know. Yeah. All right, Darren, thanks very much indeed. Killian, you're on 98FM. How are you, Killian? 
A grand view. Taxis in Dublin, we all take them from time to time. You have a story, though. Yeah, uh, one time I was getting a taxi from Blanchard Centre to Clonsilla. And this was one night I was, I was, I was a bit drunk. Mm-hmm. And then um, I, fell, I fell asleep in the back after like two minutes. And then I woke up like five minutes later and I saw the big shopping bag outside Charleston Shopping Centre. I was like, why are you bringing me here? And he goes, is this not where you wanted to go, Bally Moon? I was like, no, I, I wanted to go to Clonsilla. And he goes, oh, well, that's, that's your fault. And then he drove me back to Clonsilla. And by the time we got home, the tax fare was like 40 euro. And did he charge and, you the full amount? Uh, no, well, we went back and forth for a while. I said, look, you brought me out to Charleston when I said, go to Clonsilla. And like, um, I said, like, I have your registration plate and everything. Like, I can get you in trouble. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you it for free. Just please don't, just please don't get me in trouble or anything. <clears throat> Because I've heard similar stories. Uh, in fact, I was talking to somebody in our office earlier on who said he got into a taxi. The taxi driver might have thought he was drunk and he was going to a certain hotel in Dublin. Um, they pull up outside a hotel and the taxi driver says, uh, here you are. And uh, my mate says, no, no, not, not this hotel. I told you what hotel it was. And your man said, oh, sorry, you didn't say that. You t-. Anyway, he brought him deliberately to the wrong hotel so that he could charge him more money. Um, now, he didn't pay more money, which is very similar to the story that you have. And that actually is a story I've heard uh, on a number of occasions where you say, I want to go to X place. And a good example will be a particular hotel in Dublin. And then they bring you to the wrong hotel, but claim that you told them that hotel in the first place where you didn't. And then it's another tenor to go to the right hotel. Uh, so just be wide to that one. Uh, Frank, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Frank? Hello, Frank. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Frank. Um, good stuff. You, you, believe we, you believe we need to up the standard of taxis in what way? Adrian, how are you? Yeah, no, we do. I tell you, it should be uniformed across the board. It's the only sector in the public service industry uh, in the state that it's really a free-for-all. And what I mean by a free-for-all, uh, he or she can go out there, they can drive a car, I think... No older than 10 years of age. Now, I could be wrong there. I don't know. Um, any make or model. They can wear what they like. Shorts, T-shirts, vest tops, you name it. You get onto a Dublin bus, the guy or the girl there is presented, they're, they're nicely dressed. Mm-hmm. Irish Rail, the train driver, the staff, nicely dressed. Uh, ferry ports, airports, nicely dressed. Because they're dealing with the public. It's a public transport system. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's not the taxi man's fault. It's just a, it's, it's, it's the system they, they, they were brought into. Um, I think as well that the state, I blame the Taxi Federation for this, but the state, you go to Spain and you see the guys and girls in Spain, the cars are immaculate, impeccable condition, and the driver, because they're part funded, they're subsidized by the Spanish government. And a lot of countries across Europe are the same. And I think it should be done here through the state. The Taxi Federation, in my eyes, are just a useless bunch. They should be there demanding that the state, the likes of VRT off a vehicle. So let's just say Ford of Ireland. They go to Ford of Ireland. And they'll all drive a, drive a Ford. But they're getting that car, say, in a blue colour or yellow colour. And there's something like five grand off it. Okay, so you would like to see uh, taxi drivers being made to wear a uniform. Oh, definitely. And the car, as I said to you, the same car, same, condi- same condition. It has to be, you know, say five years. It has to be no older than five years of age. That's a little bit unreasonable, Frank. It's There's a bloody cost of cars here state, in Ireland. If the state, if the state, listen to me, the state can part from Dublin bus on Irish Rail. And as far as I'm concerned, a taxi is a public service vehicle. They should be demanding it be part funded by the state. Likewise, in any other country in Europe. Look at London, black cabs, part funded. Okay, so you would like to see, even though, and I have to point this out, Frank, taxi drivers are self-employed. They are employing themselves. They are not working for a company. Um, You know, you you go to McDonald's and you can be told to wear a uniform because you're working for McDonald's. Uh, You can be a Dublin bus driver, but you work for Dublin bus. Taxi drivers are self-employed. I just explained that to you, Adrian. Every other country in Europe is part funded the taxi industry. Spanish drivers and French drivers and London-based drivers don't work for the government. 
They work for themselves also. But it's a system that works. Why is it always the paddies on Ireland that have systems that don't work? Everything's done arse about face in the place. Because you'll have him or her going, I don't really like that colour and I don't like that car. Tough tits. It's a public service. If you don't like it, get out of it. Okay, so you want to see them wearing uniforms. You want to see uh, uniform cars. So all the cars are the same make and model, are they? Say, so look at that's a deal. That's a deal with the state when in relation to VRT issues with a car maker. I, I can't. I, I don't know what way to do that. But I mean, taxis should be able to get. I mean, I'm sure if you says to a taxi man or woman now tomorrow, by the way, we can put you into a brand new car, and it's going to cost you six thousand less because the VRT is coming off it. I think he or she now would jump at that operation. May, maybe so, yeah. You may, maybe you're right. Because I know, uh, for example, I was in Germany a couple of months ago, uh, came out of the train station, and all of the taxis all lined up outside the train station were all Mercedes E220s. Yeah, brilliant, every brilliant. single one of them just, was. Just real quick, I got a taxi there about two years ago. I'll never forget it. And I was coming from Dunshockland into Dublin. I was after doing a bit of business out there, and I had to leave a car, and I was coming back in. And this seven-seater Adrian picked me up. Now, the guy I'd say, the gentleman was in his 60s, I'd say. But I am telling you, the dashboard of that car looked like a farmer had road evaded or something, to plant something. He had brought a sky blue short on him. And last week's dinner must have been all over the front of him. Lovely. Now, I just... And the neck, his neck lying around the collar of the short was black. And I just said to myself now, there's paddy land again. There's people coming as far as way as Timbuktu and they're getting into his cab. Welcome to paddy land. Well, okay, stay there for a second because, Tim, you're <coughs> a taxi driver um, and you wear a uniform. I wear a uniform always. Always. Okay, now what is yeah. what does your uniform consist of? I work for a company and I, I, I have to wear a uniform. Okay. I respect my job. But I don't know where these people, they come from, because a year ago, in all world, the taxi drivers come, the friendliest people, the friendliest taxis in the world, number one, I think, uh, before last year. And these people, they didn't come across to say, oh, well done to the taxi drivers in Dublin. And I drive a very clean taxi. I have a Mercedes, which is, it, it doesn't matter what car you drive it. Mm-hmm but your car has to be spotless. Yeah, okay. Uh, I agree. Um, I think most people agree. It doesn't mean uh, that all taxis are spotless. Now, as a matter of interest, Tim, okay, with your uniform, because you're working for a company, they're able to tell you to wear a uniform. Is that right? Yeah, but I we have drivers sometimes they don't they doesn't wear the uniform, but I I prefer to wear the uniform and I prefer to... And I assume it's just a shirt and trousers, is it? Yeah. And probably a shirt with the taxi company's logo on it. Of course, yeah. Yes, okay. And I assume they provide that for you. You have to pay for it. Well, you have to pay for it. But of course, yes. For a shirt with a, with a logo on it. Yes, you oh. have. Right, okay, fair enough. A bit odd, I think, for, that you'd be made pay for a shirt that's advertising the company. But anyway, you so you wear that uniform. Do you think, as was suggested a moment ago, that all taxi drivers should have to wear a uniform, that it should become standard? Listen, uh, I think uh, in to be respectful for as a as a public transport people, they have to have a certain clause uh, not to be showing some of the drivers, which is you can see it. To be honest with you, it should be shame. Okay, because somebody uh, just t- sent me in a photograph. I don't know how how genuine this is, but uh, somebody sent us in a photograph to uh, of a taxi driver sitting behind the wheel of a taxi in a string vest. It's not good enough, is it? No, no, it's not good. You have to respect yourself first and after respect the people, uh, you know, like what you're wearing and what you're doing. Because these type of things, you know, like the public transport. And I don't agree with that guy, which he say the taxi should be five years old. Five years old, uh, what he's talking about now? You, you can't make a... Okay, you know, but like, I, like I said, I've been to... I was in Germany recently, came out of a train station, and every single taxi on the taxi rank was the same colour, and they were all Merce- I, I Mercedes. Yes, no, but I in assume this they're country, subsidised. I in this country... 
It's it's different because in Germany you don't pay a VRT. You get a taxi Mercedes in Germany. You pay twenty five thousand euro. You go here at the Mercedes to get a Mercedes Benz and to drive on a, as a taxi, and it's fifty five thousand to fifty nine thousand euro. How can you make that in five years? For example, it's it, it's hard. I have a Mercedes. I have one six one, and I I drive. Here in Dublin, I make a living. I I I I I'm, I I can't be rich to drive a taxi, but I make a living. That's that's my choice. This is my office. It's that's I decide to get. Well, okay, this car. hang on. You're saying you drive a sixteen yeah. uh, Mercedes. How were yeah. you able to afford that? I afford because I I don't go and spend the money for for nothing. I spend the money because this is my job and this is my office. I don't go and drink every every single weekend. And, and spend the money on the pub, but I put on the car. Okay, stay, stay there for one second. Okay, you know, stay like. there for one second, Tim. So Tim has got a top of the range mark, a two year old mark. Um, should all taxis be at that standard? Should we expect better than what we're getting? Call me right now on six seven nine seven ninety eight one. Margaret, what is your complaint? My complaint is their choice of music. I don't want to listen to it when I get into a taxi. I'm paying for the ride, and I want silence. You want silence? Yes. Is that too much to ask? I don't want to chat to them. I don't want to listen to their choice of music. I usually read or have my phone or whatever. Okay, so you want to get into a taxi and Mm -hmm. uh, the taxi driver could have, for example, this radio show on, on 98FM, and you'd, uh, you'd prefer if it wasn't on. Yes, I do. Or they're listening to their type thump, thump, thump in your ear. And if there's someone with you, you can hardly hear what they're saying. One occasion, my daughter asked the taxi driver to turn it down. And if you've seen the look he gave her. Okay, so uh, you've been in taxis where they're playing like kick and dance music? When they're uh, scratchy sort of music. I just don't want, I just don't want to listen to their music. That's all. Anyway, I have is, to go. It's just another thought. Is, 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 sorry, uh, Margaret, is there any particular type of music that offends you more than others? No, not really. You just want to be in silence in the car yes. and you don't want to talk to the driver. You just want to get from A to B Anybody. in silence. Yes. I see. And uh, generally speaking, they don't really oblige, do they not? Uh, they do. Um, some of them would turn it off. Some of them would turn it down. But, uh, you know, I still don't want to listen to it. Anyway, listen, Adrian, we have to go. Okay, Love all right. Mar- Mar- okay. Shh, shh, shh. That's the way Margaret likes to travel in a taxi. Um, <laughs> Shane, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Shane? Not too bad. How are you, Liz? Sh- Shane, is that an unreasonable request of somebody to ask a taxi driver to travel in silence? <laughs> my, my dad's a taxi driver going on near 30 years now. Yeah. And he always had fairness to him. I have to give him, like, he's 67 years of age and he's just, he's, he's semi-retired now at the moment. Okay. But my father always, 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 he went out, cleaned his windows every day made sure the car was spotless, made sure he was spotless going into his car. As he said, it's his, as that man said, it's his office, that's his work. But I think people are being a bit harsh on taxi drivers as well, complaints like that, that silly complaint, you don't listen to music. Don't get into a taxi and walk. Get the bus. <laughs> no, but seriously, but, but, like, but that, okay. that, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> if you're paying for the journey... Then get out and get into a different taxi. That doesn't ask a taxi man. You, you, you've got to remember, you can pick what taxi you get into. Like, if you're on a taxi rank, you don't have to get into the first taxi. If you choose not to get into that taxi, you know what I mean? You don't have to. You, you, it's up to you what taxi you get into. There's no law saying you have to take the first taxi. No, I know that, yeah. So right. I, 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 if if Margaret were to arrive at a taxi and he's uh, boom, 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 boom. And he won't boom. turn it down. And he won't yeah, turn he can get down. into the next taxi. Yeah. 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 And that's just, that's true. It's your choice. It's your, your, I see she is paying the fare, but it's your choice what car she gets into. Now, 90% of the taxi men will oblige and will turn it down. Like my dad, my dad loves listening to diddly eye music. Oh, and God, the thoughts of travelling from yeah, A to B listening to diddly eye music now. <laughs> but, he re- he's a, but it's not that. He, he, my dad's real jolly. And any, anyone who knows my father will tell you, he's probably one of the happiest men you'll ever meet in your life. But this thing of getting them all uniformed and all this and all that, people don't realise out there that when a taxi man is out sick, well, uh, up until two years ago, when a taxi man is out sick, on a taxi man was out at work because his car was broke down like that. He didn't get any social welfare. He couldn't go on down and claim on the sick around like that because he told, no, you're self-employed. Nothing we could do about you. And they only brought in the last few years where they could pay money. 
and now that now they're getting PRSI. But up until then, my dad paid his taxes every single year. My dad had a massive operation there for But okay, years. just to go back to the uniform thing for a second. Yeah. What would be so wrong in having a uniform, uniform, if you know what I mean, that all taxi drivers had to wear the same uniform? And it could have, like, the That's logo fine. the logo for the national... The logo for the national... You have to buy clothes anyway. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Hang on, yeah, but, hang on, yeah, but hang on, again, what I'm saying is, on my tax, with my job, I can claim my tax, I can claim my uniform tax back. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, I'm sure a taxi driver can as well. Yeah, if they brought it in. Yeah, but as I'm saying to you, they have to bring it all in together. If they're going to make them wear a uniform, yeah, bring the tax then that they can claim it back like everyone else can. But I'm saying to you, like for years, taxi men, if they, as I said to you, no one helped them out when they were out sick or no one helped them out when they were, when they were off the road. They were all self-employed, but yet they still had to pay the same tax as me and you. Yeah, you see, it's, it's just I, I, I can see... The logic behind the whole uniform thing that oh, no, all, no, all taxi drivers, let's just say, for example, I don't know if this will be it, but they uh, all wear black trousers and a white shirt or black trousers and a blue shirt or whatever. And it might have the uh, National Transport Authority logo on it. And it might also have a logo for the company that you might work with. Um, yeah, well, mostly, you know, like VIP cabs and stuff like that. Exactly, they yeah. They have their logo on yeah. And it looks well. And I'm not saying it. Yeah, it should look well. And not, the whole thing of only having... And that way, you're, you're not going to get into cars with the drivers wearing flip-flops or string vests or track suits or any of that. Because it would be... It's like all our bus drivers wear a uniform. Yeah, oh, but hang on. But, yeah, but the bus drivers are paid by the state. No, I understand that. I understand that. But, it, 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 I mean, if this is about money... You would be able to claim the cost back on your taxes. It'd be no yeah, big. It, that'd be no yeah, biggie. No, it'd be no biggie. Yeah, but if that's what I'm saying, it's all if. When it comes to people are saying, "Oh, they should be like bus drivers or Lewis drivers," or like that you got to remember, they get their uniform off the company. So are the taxman going to get it off the state? Yeah, like uh, good question. But I do, I, I, I do think it's something that because it's one of the complaints that people make about uh, oh, about listen, taxis. You're around some taxi drivers and they're wearing sandals. They're, they're, they're having this on, they're having tracksuits on, they're having shorts on. They're fair enough in hot weather, a short sleeve short, pair of trousers. That's what they should be wearing. Mm. But once they're comfortable in the car, like you try, I, I, you try to drive around for eight hours or ten hours of the day and wear jeans or something like that, and it'd be sweaty and stuffy. So a pair of light slacks and a short sleeve short or a long sleeve short, yeah, with a logo saying taxi man or whatever it is on it. And that may be, that may be a good way of getting the fake taxis off the road as well. That if you're not, if you haven't got a full uniform on and you can only get a uniform as a fully registered taxi man, that's another way you can determine whether who's a real taxi driver and who's not as well. All right, let me just bring in one last call on this, and that's you, Mags. You're on 98 FM. How are you, Mags? How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, tell me about uh, your mam. What happened to her? My mam is an old age pensioner. She's 85 years of age. Every Friday, she gets a taxi from Superquin. They ring in the shop when she's ready, and the taxi will pull up and call her name. Okay. So she goes in the taxi, and it's normally seven euro. But two weeks ago, she got the taxi, and he wanted ten euro offer. Mm. Now, mum is doing this for years. Do you know what I mean? And my mum said, no, it's only seven euro. No, it's ten euro. And he was demanding 10 euro off my mam. So in the end, mam gave him the 10 euro. So last week, she got the same taxi man. And when he seen my mam, he said, you know, it's 10 euro. And poor mam had 7 euro in her hand. Oh, no. So he took the 7 euro offer and told her that that was the last time if she got into his taxi that she would he would take seven euro. What After an ignorant pig. Oh, he was very, very ignorant. And he was telling her about the price of electricity, about the price of gas, that he had to earn a living. Now, ma'am said... No, he's, I'm he assuming said, she's only going from... She's only going down the road. She actually goes from Super Quinn in Finglas to Rathbilly Drive in Finglas. Oh, it's only around the corner. It's only around the corner, and ma the majority of the taxi men are lovely. They will put her shopping in the boot for her and take it out and ask her, is she okay walking down, you know, to the gate and wherever? Mm. She said, this taxi man was so ignorant. And does she, and I, does she book it now? I don't, know, I don't want you to name the company. Does she book it through a company, or does what she... They, 
Sorry, Adrian. Or did she just hail them outside uh, Super Value? Well, it's now called Super Value. Did she super hail them value, out, yeah. outside Super Value? No. no. Super Quinn ring the taxi Oh, for I you. see. Right, okay. So and then they call her name when they just get to the door. Man will be waiting. But she said he was so, so ignorant and telling me all about gas and Lecky going up and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, what we have to do, ma'am, is make a complaint about that man. That is disgraceful for him to talk to you like that, 85 years of age. 85, my God, what a pig ignorant. And uh, that guy's probably listening to us right now. He knows exactly who he is. So what do you want to say to uh, that taxi driver? I would like to say to that taxi driver to have manners and treat pensioners like they should be treated. I am so happy and delighted to say that I have still have my mum. And for anybody, let alone a man, a taxi man, anybody to speak to my mother like that is absolutely disgraceful. And do you have this taxi driver's number? No. Oh, no. I don't have anything like that. But it just so happens he's the taxi driver that arrived on two occasions. On two occasions, yes. And have you been on to I- Super Value? I, that's my next thing to Okay, because that's what I would do. I would find out from Super Value. There's only a couple of uh, taxi firms in Fingless. Uh, I would, funny. Yeah, I would get on to Super Value and find out and where, on, where, who they order the taxi from. And on one occasion, my mum had my special needs sister in the back seat of the car. When he wanted the 10 euro? When he wanted the 10 euro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In, um, in my opinion, uh, somebody of your mother's age should be given a free bloody taxi, if you want the honest truth, but... I doubt any of them are going to I do that. I said I'd um, ring you and let you know that there okay, are ignorant, uh, taxi, ignorant taxi men out there. There certainly are. What a pig. Um, okay, but let, let me know and let me know what Super Value say and let me know if you can uh, manage to track that guy down because I've, I've no doubt that he's listening. Uh, it's so rude to... Uh, and, and your mother there with her seven euro in her hand and... Yeah, she wraps the two euro and the five euro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And when they get to the house, the taxi man takes the seven euro, gets that usually gets out of the car, hands her her shopping and asks her, is she okay, you know, to open the gate and whatever. No, not this man. All right. Thanks very much for your call. And uh, if that guy is listening, seriously, let the woman charge, pay seven euro for God's sake. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. This is a podcast of 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy.